Hi guys, it's Brian Phillips. I'm coming at you back in Miami for the second episode of my vlog. I want to reiterate that I'm, us I'm using this vlog to talk about my my experience, my experiences over the weekend at my at whatever job or event that I'm working that weekend. And today I'm back at my uh, at the go kart track that I usually work at. Today was a little bit special though because we had a race today. It's round nine of the season. We usually have one race per month. We get about 80 to 100 entries, a lot of go-karts. We'll separate them by class and by rank and by age and by weight. There's a lot of details that I'll go over later. But um, the main point being that I wanted to talk to you guys about how I communicate with the, with the drivers and my uh, co-workers and the customers that come up, that come up. I think this is going to be a pretty inform informable episode about what I do usually on a weekend. So I wanted to start describing my weekend by telling you about the basic idea of what what I do, which is corner working. Corner working is ba is a uh, someone who stands on the edge of the track or the turn with the flag set and a radio set to communicate with the drivers and the co-workers who are also around the rest of the track to make sure that we have a large enough line of communication where everyone's on the same page. Um, I communicate with the drivers using flags the most so I'll go with three basic ones that you'll see at a traffic light green flag of course means go I'm the guy who start, that starts all the cars, and when they see my me wave the green flag, that's their signal to let them know that the track is open, and it's clear for them to go down the track, and they won't find anything wrong a few meters down the track cause, because I'm waving the green flag, and they know and they know that everything is okay, and they're and they're free to put the throttle down and go as fast as they need to down the track. But of course, it's not going to be complete without. It's not going to be a race there without crashes, and there's a lot, a lot of them. Some crashes are bigger, some crashes are smaller. Most crashes are are just small little bits that get cleaned up, that clean, that clean up, clean by themselves uh, easily. But when there is a crash, I am waving this yellow flag. Again, these these flags are just little models that I have. They're much bigger in person. Don't worry, but I can't bring in them home to home tonight. Anyway, um, when there's a crash down the road, I'm waving the yellow flag, and now let the driver, the driver coming at me and coming towards the crash know, hey, there's a crash down the road. I might not see it, but this man is waving the yellow flag. That means I need to slow down. And once he does slow down, he's going to safe speed for him, his sake, and for the driver who has crashed sakes too, because we don't want that get, the driver coming down the road to crash into the into the guy who stopped up the road. And if the crash is bad enough, like we've had, had like we had a few today, uh, we'll throw the red flag, and that m means that all turn that all, all drivers who see the red flag will stop wherever they they are, because there's been a bad enough wreck where we need where the driver might need medical assistance. There's an ambulance re um, sitting on the side of the track, and when we throw the red flag, we make sure all the cars have stopped. Once they, once they've stopped, we'll tell the ambulance to move on out and go to where, wherever the crash is at. Today we had about four or five red flags. Most of them were for flips and for drivers running into barriers or, or crashing through them and breaking them or crashing under them. Again, all these drivers were fine afterwards, but it's always the initial shock that gets everyone. So when a car flips over Usually, it's, uh, it's usually the driver will fall. The driver will fall out of the cart instead of staying underneath the cart. The carts don't have seat belts because if you stayed underneath the cart, that'd be a lot worse for you. So it's just better to fall out of the cart instead. And they're never going fast enough in, fl in flipping and flying out of the car where it really hurts them. Usually, it's just a small uh, eight, um, paperclip turn where they have to brake a lot and go down to maybe like 20 miles an hour, make a sharp turn. And a lot of times there could be a lot of contact there and flip the cart over. 
Um, they also crashed through the barriers, and so we had a few guys break the barriers today, which is a little bit annoying because then we had, to, we had to fix it. That happens when drivers don't, when they spin out, they don't hold the brake, and they'll just bash into a barrier. They'll be, they'll, they'll be alright, but the, there'll just be a lot of damage everywhere, and it takes a lot of time to clean it up, which is which sets us back on schedule. So, with scheduling, we have someone who makes the schedule prehand, and he'll print it out and pass it out to everyone so that we're all on the same page, but of course, we, we, we do whatever we can to stay to that schedule, but if, they, if there's a crash that takes a long time to clean up, or if there's rain, and we have to drive the track, then of course we're going to be off schedule and late, so we do whatever we can to stay on schedule, but that just, it doesn't always work. So something else is pretty cool about what we do is communicating with the other uh, corner workers, with the other co co-workers. My track has about 12 turns. Not every turn needs someone there, but I have co-workers and we, and I'll place them strate strategically where they'll be able to be at a, a turn where they're safe to stand there and flag and do their job, but also to be there when someone crashes because they, they'll crash around their turn pretty often. And the way we communicate with everyone is a, is a radio and a headset. And we have to have the headset because the cars are so loud that we can't really hear the person next to us if we, if we were talking to, talking to them. So since we're not anywhere close to each other, we need the headsets. And that's why also we need the radios. That, um, when you talk on the radio, you get, you're going to use your headset. Your headset has a little mic right in front of your lips. You press the button down, hold it for a second so you don't cut yourself off, and then say whatever you need to say. Say who you are, what turn you're at, and what fly condition you are, and what uh, and what you want to call in about either a question or an observation or a response to a question that we, we might have asked you. I also want to use this time to talk about how we communicate with the customers. Again, they can't really hear us, and we can't really hear them when they talk to us when there's a car on track, so it's hard to get like right up next to them and talk in their ear. And it's a funny way of communicating, but I've made a lot of friends at the track, and a lot of important people uh, have their sons or have their children racing there, and it's, and it's cool to see these important people just become parents and job and job their normal job weekday jobs just to come out to the weekend and be be a parent and work on the carts and talk to the to their drivers instead of do, doing what, what they usually do that's actually one of the ways I made friends with the president now of the Homestead Miami Speedway his son races and I was uh, working in my first few, few months at the go kart track, and I realized who he was, and I talked to uh, I talked to him and talked to his son, and um, made a good impression with the with the guy. So I'm pretty sure that's a good connection that I have to push me forward l later on in the future, and I'm looking forward to seeing where that bridge can lead. So for the final recap of the day, besides handling everything on track and everything that happened off track, it was a pretty good day. Overall, we had good weather. Uh, we had a relatively, relatively safe race, safe day of racing. I did my job, and I don't think I really made any, any mistakes. And I solved uh, um, problems that other people had, and made sure to clean up their messes. And I, I felt helpful and useful there. And it's something that I've always looked forward to at, at the end of every weekend just going through the hard week and trying to handle everything that I'm dealing with school and responsibilities and home life it's always good to have something to look forward to by the end of the weekend I feel like the most unique experience of the day was thinking about how I commu communicated with all the different ways I communicated with, pe with the people I worked with and the drivers and the customers whether it was talking to the radio, using hand gestures and signals, uh, yelling, yelling or talking or texting, or and of course waving the flags. I feel like it's really cool to see all the, difference, all, all the differences I can make 
in one day. I also want to say uh, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. The next video I'll probably go into more detail about the job that I do and what corner working is, so I can describe it better to you and make and have it make a little more sense. And um, I'll see what else I can pull through and see if I can can't create anything unique with this blog. We'll see what happens. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a nice night.